Hi, I'm Mom Kay, and let's talk about electrolyte and non-electrolyte. You may be familiar with the term electrolytes, especially when it comes to marketing sports drink. Looking at the nutrition label for a popular sports drink, you may notice that it contains sodium and potassium. These are sodium and potassium ions which are free ions in a solution. So if you drink this kind of sports drink, you are basically drinking salty water. Perhaps those runners or basketball players or any sports enthusiast have heard electrolytes before. But what does the term really mean? How does electrolyte differs from non-electrolyte? Electrolyte is a substance that when dissolved in water will dissociate into a positively charged and negatively charged ions which have the ability to conduct electricity in a solution. A substance that will not dissociate into ions when dissolved in water will not be able to conduct electricity and is therefore called non-electrolyte. The greater the extent to which a substance dissociates, the stronger the electrolyte it is. If a substance completely dissociates in a solution, it is a strong electrolyte, and it will conduct electricity very well. If a substance only partially ionizes in a solution, in other words, some particles dissociate and some do not. This will be called a weak electrolyte, which still conduct electricity, but not as good as the strong electrolyte. And as I have said, the substance that will not dissociate at all will be called non-electrolyte. Therefore, we can categorize substances into one of these three things by measuring the electrical conductance of their corresponding aqueous solution. To test solutions for ions, we can use an apparatus that consists of a battery and a pair of electrodes connected by wire to any light bulb. The light bulb glow when electricity can flow. In order to conduct electricity, a substance must contain freely mobile charged particles. The more ions there are in a solution, the greater the conductivity. We can measure the current flow or we can simply observe the brightness of the light bulb included in the circuit. Sodium chloride is made of a metal which is a sodium and a non-metal which is the chlorine. If we have metal and non-metal, we have an ionic compound. If the ionic compound is soluble, it dissolves in water, and it splits apart into its ions. That will make it an electrolyte and will conduct electricity. So zoom in the periodic table is in group 1. So it contains ion that has plus 1 charge. Chlorine that's in group 17, sometimes called 7A, that forms ion has one minus ionic charge. We should write AQ after this to show that they are aqueous. They are dissolved in water. So NaCl or sodium chloride is an electrolyte. It is a strong electrolyte because it dissolves completely into its sodium ions and chloride ions. If we put sucrose in water, the bulb will not light up because there are no ions in a solution. What happens is that sugar is dissolving into an aqueous sugar molecules. But the sugar molecules did not separate. There are no ions there. And so, if it's not separating the ions, that's why it's not lighting the light bulb because there are no ions in there. 
to help the electrical charge flow through the solution. So this is non-electrolyte. Acetic acid or household vinegar will barely light the light bulb. In the case of acetic acid, there is an electrolyte, but it is a weak electrolyte. Acetic acid is liquid in pure form. We can add some water to make it aqueous. It does not separate into ions. The ions we get here are hydrogen ions and an acetate ion. But we only got some of them. It stays mostly in its molecular form as opposed to its ionized form. And so, weak electrolytes is a mixture of ionized form and molecular form. That's why it does light a light bulb, but just barely because there are relatively a small number of ions. So those are the electrolytes, strong electrolyte, weak electrolytes, and non-electrolyte. I hope you have learned something from this video. Have a great day!